Hey YouTube, I'm working on a 2007 uh, Chevy uh, Suburban. Um, it's got that 5.3 uh, liter engine in it. Sorry, it's probably blurry, but yeah, take it from me. It's got the yeah 5.3 liter engine. Um, it came in with trouble codes uh, P0171 and P0174. Um, there's a couple different things it can be. Uh, but when I bring up on my scanner, you know, you can look at the fuel trims and stuff like that. Oh, it doesn't look like it wants to go dead. Let me turn this light off. That way we don't have too much of a glare going on. Okay, so, um, basically, it's not running right now, but if I start it up, these, you, you want these to be zeroed out. Kind of like with each other, you know, give or plus minus a couple um, degrees. But as these are reading zero just because the engine's off or whatever. But if I start it up, these will probably all go to uh, somewhere around each other. But they'll read high. They'll read too high. Um, so let me start up just so you guys can hopefully it'll jump back in. I ain't got to go through the whole process of rescanning re it. Um, you can go on your live data. Some people don't have a scan tool to, uh, you know, to be able to go to these parameters and, and see that. And that's okay. You know, if you can get to a shop or whatever, you know, at least some auto zones or rallies, they'll scan it for you. You know, and, and then as long as you know it's these trouble codes, P0174 or P0171, you can kind of... You know, try to do your own diagnostic before, you know, bringing it into a shop and, you know, spending four or five hundred dollars for whatever reason it could be. I mean, if it's like an intake manifold, you know, leaked in, sure, you know, some people can't do that. But anywho, so these are these are the readings, the motor start, these are the, the readings of it, right? And that's too high. So, um, I'm going to shut off the motor and I'm going to go up to the engine and show you what it possibly can be so um there's a couple things it could be it could be the uh, mass airflow sensor you know could be dirty you know it could be dirty you know sometimes it'd be cracked or someone didn't put the clamps on or something like that so it might be kind of halfway on and halfway off so make sure all this stuff is tight and secure this is wiggly because the, the bottom box is broke or whatever so but that's not going to cause it to have those uh, those readings. Um, make sure, you know, this is all the way under tight. You know, that goes to the throttle body, electric throttle body. So make sure that's tight. Make sure the, you know, the screw is tight on there. You can't, you shouldn't be able to just pull it off with regular force. Um, make sure this little vacuum fitting's on there. Sometimes it could be just, you know, sitting on there halfway or something, you know. So just make sure that's in there. You know, it's not going to be just really tight in there you know you can't pull it out with some force but you know make sure it's in there follow down follow this down to where it goes you know down to here make sure that's on there you know make sure it's not cracked halfway down um also up here there's another vacuum line you know right here make sure that's on there you know once again follow it just go ahead and you know pull it back follow it. sometimes people get up in there and they lean on the engine and it breaks or they're moving stuff and they're careless and they just break it. Could have been changing the alternator and it broke or something. So that's to the PCV right here. So make sure that's, or a solenoid should I say, make sure that's on there. All right, and follow that to the back side, you know, right here. Make sure that stuff is all nice and secure. Follow down to where it goes, you know. Even with the uh, the uh, the uh, boost right here, the boost pump or whatever, make sure that's on there. The vacuum, make sure it's all the way on there. So you know, you, if this came off, you wouldn't have no brake really either. So your brake would be really hard to push down. So make sure that's on there. That goes to the back of the the engine back here. It's kind of hard to reach back there, but you know, just make sure there's no holes and stuff like that. Um, what I ended up finding, finding was a bad uh, vacuum leak. Um, here goes another one right here. 
it's right right here make sure this is not broken off you know follow it follow it follow it and that's what i did i kept following all my vacuum lines and i ended up uh, ended up way back here in the back the back driver's side corner you know and, and this usually goes on top of here you know it goes right on top of there right so it was on there it was on there but it was it had a crack in the line so when i pull that out when i pull that out you know this was all split you know it got a crack right down the uh the middle of it so it was just steady sucking air or whatever so you know instead of taking it to the shop and like i said they they lying and saying it's uh XYZ, you're gonna need a whole upper intake manifold or mass air flows, 300, 400, you know, $500,000 or whatever, you know, they come up with their head to make, you know, their money. Um, just do a little snooping around yourself, you know? Just, you know, make sure the engine's, uh, you know, somewhat cold if you can. You don't wanna burn yourself. Um, sometimes people use like throttle body cleaner. Sometimes, you know, as far as, uh, like spraying little spurts of it around the intake and stuff like that to uh, see if you hear a change in tone, you know, as far as like the engine idle. So um, you also can do it with the engine running. You know, like I said, just don't burn yourself. I don't want to be responsible for people burning themselves on stuff. Um, but just kind of, you know, wiggle stuff around, you know, and see if you hear a change in, in, in the tone of the engine while it's running, you know, just be careful. Don't stick your hand by the belt, you know, and let it, you know, that's not common sense. You know, you don't want to stick your hand by a, a moving object where it can get caught in there and, and, and hurt yourself. You know, you don't want to, this radiator hose up here, it gets a little hot, you know, so you don't want to touch that. You know, you're going to burn yourself. You don't want to touch down by the, uh, exhaust manifold you know just kind of stay up top you know where you can wiggle you know wiggle stuff and hear a change in tone you might you might surprise yourself and find something you know and you know this is gonna cost you know for one i'm not gonna charge nobody for no crap like this i'll charge them for a hose and maybe like a i don't know whatever time it took me for diagnostics procedure you know so whether that be you know 40 50 bucks or something like that you know but i'm not gonna try to cheat nobody and say okay it was a whole i had to tear apart the whole top engine you know and just screw somebody over um so like i said i mean just take it for what it is you know ain't nothing wrong with trying it yourself most people should try stuff themselves they'll they'll probably start to like it you know because it is it is fun figuring out a satisfactory you know, figuring out that you found something and you figured it out on your own. Um, I mean, message me if you have any questions about, you know, any kind of engine. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm always willing to help people. Um, yeah. You know, so uh, take it for what it is. And if you have any questions, you know, just message me or something and we'll figure it out together. I'll tell you whatever I know about the situation you're having. Um, God bless you. Take care of yourself.